Mark. Well, welcome to Facebook Live. Obviously, here to answer some questions about the changes going on at the club at the minute. Um, we'll start with the obvious one. Uh, change, obviously difficult to, to, part, to part ways with someone who's been at the club for so long, but why was that decision made? Absolutely. Um, you know, very, very difficult to part ways with Jim. He's overseen you know, so many years of great success here at the, the club. He's well liked, well respected uh, by you know, players, staff uh, alike. Um, so difficult decision, but one that the board felt was, was right to take place at this time, ultimately driven by uh, on-pitch performances and results. What's the immediate plan uh, in Jim's absence now? So we've asked Alan Dickens uh, to step up into the role as interim head coach, uh, and we're really focused on making sure that Alan and the other coaches have got the right conditions to succeed through the balance of this season. And clearly in parallel, we're beginning a search to, to find Jim's uh, long-term successor. That calibre of coach, who are you looking for? Look, I think we've got an incredible offer here at Northampton Saints. We've got a brilliant facility, loyal supporters, uh, a great group of players, a mix of experience and youth, some exciting new players coming in. And so we're really looking for someone who can come in and thrive in that environment and ultimately help us deliver on the high ambitions that we set here at this club. There's a lot of questions. Someone's just popped up now. Obviously, we're live, so we can take questions asking about other coaches. We won't speak specifically about the future of one coach, as someone has asked, but um, is there scope for more change in the future? What, what's the plan with that? Look, I think we felt that it, the time was right for some change, and we felt that the, the change should happen at the, the top. Um, and now we've got to get behind our coaches, make sure we've got the right conditions for them to succeed, as I say, through the balance of the season. We may well bring in some interim support to work with and alongside our existing coaches, but we won't do that in a rash way. We would only do that if the right person is available, um, whilst in parallel finding Jim's long-term successor. Does this have a financial implication on the club? What's the impact of that? It does have a financial implication, but you know, not one that changes our approach. Does it impact our ability to, to bring in new players? No. Does it impact our ability to continue to invest in the facility here at Franklin's Gardens? No. Um, so we're, we're focused on getting things right on the pitch and making sure we deliver a fantastic supporter experience here at the Gardens. You talk about recruitment retention. There's been a lot of questions about Dan Bigger, Harry Malander specifically. What can you tell us about those guys? I spoke to Harry yesterday, as you'd expect. Um, you know, unique situation for for, for him. Uh, as everyone knows, you know, Harry's a, a highly talented and very articulate and smart guy. And I think he always realised that at some point in his professional career, he'd be playing, you know, without his his father as director of rugby or coach. Um, and I think Harry is delighted to have re-signed here and is really excited for the future. So obviously we're all delighted to hear that and uh, he's been playing well and we're, we're hoping to see more. I spoke to Dan Bigger yesterday. You know, Dan was obviously here on Saturday for the Ospreys de defeat. Um, he too is itching to get going. You know, I don't think anything that's happened over the last couple of days has impacted that. And uh, he's, uh, he's chomping at the bit to, to get here and get started next season. We're getting a lot of conflicting questions coming in here. Some people saying, why did it take so long? Has it been in your mind for a long time? And other people saying, is it a knee-jerk reaction? Um, hard to address them both in the same answer, but how would you respond to that? Look, I don't think it's a knee-jerk reaction. Um, you know, I, I've been here four months. It's difficult for me to comment on things that have happened before my tenure as chief exec, but I don't think it's a knee-jerk reaction. I think we felt like the time was right for some change. We wanted to give Jim the opportunity to turn things around, given everything that he's delivered here at the, at the club. Um, and uh, yeah, so the appropriate moment for this type of change. Just finally, obviously you say look into the future, the immediate future is the rest of this season. What's an acceptable goal to set for the team? We're in a highly competitive league um, and it's hard to predict our league, uh, but clearly we want to be climbing back up the table given the level of aspiration that we have at this club. You know, right now I think we're six points off the top six and eight points off the top four. And if we can go on the type of run that we had at the start of this season, then we'll be right back in the mix. So our aspirations are clear. Let's, let's climb back up the table um, and uh, we're excited for the future. Just very finally, what message would you have for the supporters who are maybe not necessarily worried about the future of the club, but just in these changing times, what would you say to them? It's clear that there is a lot of change at the, at the club, um, but we are incredibly thankful for the ongoing support that we, we have. It's a deep and loyal fan base. Uh, so I'd ask everyone to, you know, to, to stick with us and continue that support for which we're most grateful. Mark, thanks for your time. Thank you.